Ready? All right, let's get all set up here. Make sure it's all working good. Is anybody out there? Do, do, do. I'm just refreshing my computer down here. Make sure everything's working good. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so we'll wait for some people to jump on. I got that up there, so that's perfect. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. It's good. Sound, it sounds good? Good, good. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Hi, guys. Can you see and hear us Everybody, all right? hope you had a good lunch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Yep. So hope you enjoyed enjoy Donald's demo. It was really fabulous. Lovely creative ideas, you know, with yeah. using different mediums and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I can't believe yeah. how much you packed into that hour of so many different techniques. Yeah. It was beautiful. Hi there. Hey, Emily. All right. Becky Norton, Myra. Fantastic. All right. So um, we are going to um, be having our next demo up next, of course, Chef Nicholas Lodge. <laughs> um, and so I will be in the comment section and kind of fielding questions and things too. So um, I will shout them out to him if you have any questions throughout the demo. So just write them in the chat and I will make sure to ask your questions as you guys have them or respond if you have a technical uh, issue or anything like that. So I will keep an eye out for that. Yeah, make sure that you share. Share the broadcast <laughs> in any groups, any fun cake groups you're in, um, to any sugar friends that you want to be involved. All right. Great. Looks like everybody's jumping on. All right. All right. Fantastic. Cool. All right. Great. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Chef Nicholas. Yeah. I'm going to um, go ahead right over here for the uh, comments and everything like that. And whenever you need camera adjustments, just let yep. me know and I'll jump back Super. in. But whenever you're ready. Thank you, little sorry. sister. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. So, so excited to be here with you today. And um, obviously, this whole weekend. And uh, as Sydney said earlier on, uh, we're working on a joint collaboration. Um, so, we're sort of, I'm doing parts now for the next uh, demonstration. And then after. Uh, Dosha, then uh, Sydney will be coming back on and doing her part for today, and then obviously we'll both be act actually do tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be coming back on and be showing you like the finishing touches, the painting, and then how to put everything together. Yeah. All right, so we're doing this really fun um, tropical drink inspired coconut, which is going to have um, the little uh, pool floaty, the flamingo, which Cindy, uh, Sydney will sh show you later on, and then uh, I'll be showing you today uh, in my first part how to make the fruit for the tropical fruit skewer, then how to also make the paper umbrella out of paste, and then also I'll be showing you, talking about alternative methods, and then I will also show you how to make the first part of the orchid, all right, and then all the finishing will be tomorrow. And of course you can change this up, um, so for example, if you don't have an orchid cutter at home, but you have a sugar flower, you can just use that in there tomorrow, or you can put a little silk flower in or whatever, but it's just sort of uh, for a photo and uh, have fun with that. Um, earlier on, when we did the little introduction, when we went live uh, to start the, uh, the kickoff, I uh, talked about like on nicholasludge.com, if you haven't downloaded, there is the supply list. The supply list will go through uh, all the various things I'm using uh, today, uh, both uh, things like gel colors, a semi uh, splash uh, airbrush colors, um, the you know skewers, things like that. So that's all on the supply list. And then there's also the instruction list, which is the instructions of um, what I actually will be doing, it goes through step by step, the instructions for the citrus slice, then talks about the uh, pineapple chunks, then the cherry, and then goes on to the paper umbrella and finishes off with the dendrobium orchid. That's all on there. And if you have any questions, because I'm going to tilt the camera in a second, uh, Sydney will be um, able to answer those or should just shout across and I'll answer them verbally to it because I can't see the screen. Okay, so I'm going to get started. So Sydney could... Fabulous assistant. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just bear with me for okay. a second. No, that's fine. Oops, wait, wrong one. Hang on. Wrong lever. One second, guys. Close your eyes if you get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to roughly position this and then we will. 
get this to the right place here. Alright, let's see if that's in the spot. We just have a little delay between our screen here, guys, so one second. Let's see if that's right. Just a little bit crooked, let's see if we can straighten you guys out a little. Alright, let's see. That one a little bit straighter here. I want to tilt it too far forward. See, guys, the magic of live TV, right? <laughs> live demos. <laughs> uh, here, you want me to make it over just yep. a little bit so it's more centered? That'd be great. Thank you. All right, and then we'll get started. All right, hold on, everybody. Let's see, we're seeing more of that side. So I'm going to go side so it doesn't look like that. There we go. Just doing some quick adjustments. There we go. Perfect. All right, we wanted to be perfect for you guys. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, that's good. I think that should be better. Yeah, there we go. Now it's more in the center there. Okay. All right, go for Perfect. It. So I'm going to be using, i um, going to show you how to make, first of all, this uh, fruit skewer. So, of course, when you have a tropical pina colada or Mai Tai or other tropical drinks, a lot of times you're going to have a skewer with uh, fruit in. So I'm going to be showing you how I make the orange slice and the pineapple and the cherry on the top. Now, of course, um, when you come to the citrus slice, this is going to be painted tomorrow. So this can be turned into a lime slice. So if you want a little bit more green or you want to do, um, obviously, a lemon slice instead. But I chose the orange because it's a nice combination with, obviously, the yellow and the red. And so this is what we're going to start off with. So in your, um, you know, the supply list, as I said, so on nicholaslodge.com, you're just going to click on recipes and templates and uh, you can... See the supply list, you're just bringing this in here. I said we have a little bit of a lag, so this will be um, normal. But anyway, on the supply list, this obviously goes through the things I'm using. Now, obviously, prior to um, us leaving Atlanta on Wednesday, we did have a kit available, which is now obviously no longer available. But all of the items in the kit are things that you would have at home, like bamboo skewers, floral tape and wire, uh, things like that, if you wanted to make the umbrella. Um, but also the main molds I'm going to use, which is going to be for the citrus slice and the pineapple and also the texturing on the pineapple. Those are all available on uh, nicholaslodge.com. As we said, when we did the kickoff at 11.30 on nicholaslodge.com, we do have, it's our 30th anniversary tomorrow of Isaac, which is International Sugar Art Collection, our acronym for our business. And uh, we do have a 20% off sale at the moment. So anything you buy on the website on nicholaslodge.com before now and Monday night at midnight will be 20% off. Um, so you can buy the, obviously, winter spice mold or the uh, quilter. Uh, the fan vena or the ultimate orchid mold at a 20% off okay and that also includes all of our sale items because we have some other things on sale like i'm going to talk about the orchid cutter we have that on sale so obviously that's three dollars at the moment but if you get the 20 percent off you'll say take 60 cents off of that so you know um as i said you're going to get that for two dollars and 40 cents um so there are some bargains in the sale area so it is for everything and just to check out use that and the uh, code checkout code is isaac i-s-a-c in caps and then 30 so isaac 30 is the checkout code for 20 percent discount all right so anyway that goes through everything um for that and then there's the instructions which is what i'm going to be working to um so just like taking a class i've tried to make this as easy as possible so you can uh, sort of uh um, all the sort of be able to go along with this and this goes through the citrus slice and then obviously through the pineapple chunks through the cherry uh, through the sugar paper umbrella and the dendrobium orchid the back petals um, and then also on here at the end it does talk about our um, the uh, the small pineapple I'm going to reference and also about uh, using the citrus mold for other things which I do have all that information um, on my website but also on my YouTube channel so on my YouTube channel which is here which is Nicholas Lodge School um, on my YouTube channel there are a lot of videos related to the winter spice mold um, and also some of the other things I'm talking about uh, Donald was talking about um, you know cookies uh, obviously with his turtle um, and uh, I do have a, a three and a half hour YouTube video on there which is broken down to three parts which obviously was from cookie con that we had in Reno in March and um, so I was demonstrating some vintage 
uh, sort of cookies, some vintage inspired cookies. And um, so some of the techniques I used on that was using the uh, cookie dough like Donald used. Um, there are two recipes on there as well. There's a really good rich chocolate cookie dough. And there's also a recipe on there very much like Tundi's recipe. It's a French honey cookie. It's actually a cooked cookie dough. Um, and so you don't even need a mixer for that. You can just bake it and just uh, make it in a saucepan. And they're also very shelf stable, meaning you don't have to refrigerate the dough. You just cool it and you can use it straight away. So they work very well as well. So I'm going to talk about using the textures for flip flops and other different things as well. So I'm going to start off with the, so in the supply list, it calls for 60 grams of white rolled fondant. Now also um, remember what I'm going to show you this uh, citrus slice, the pineapple, you know, you could do this all with isomalt as well. Um, so if you wanted to, you could take some white isomalt and just make it a cream color and use that for the citrus slice but I'm using white rolled fondant now um, students sometimes ask me you know can you use gum paste of course you can use gum paste for this as well I'm using what I call modified fondant and modified fondant is something I use a lot in that we take the fondant we add tylos or CMC to it and what that's going to do is going to change the consistency It's going to firm up the fondant a little bit so a lot of times when I use molds uh, like for example my pine cone molds my antler molds if I'm using fondant, I would just modify the fondant, okay? And so on all of my videos and things, I use this a lot. But I'm using just some white rolled fondant, so whatever brand you have, it doesn't really matter what brand. And uh, so I take 60 grams of rolled fondant. Um, we had a lot of the, some of you came to the retreat, which we had obviously um, in April um, here in Florida, and we're excited about the new retreat that Sydney and I talked about. Um, at the beginning at the kickoff so this is the 60 grams of fondant but in the retreat uh, we talked about different pastes and things like that um, and uh, as I said sort of talked about different uh, ingredients and things you use and that's a nice thing about a lot, obviously all of the instructors so Sydney Dawn and I were using different mediums so you've just seen Donald showing how to use cookie dough in formers um, also uh, but as I said you can use the uh, the molds in lots and lots of different ways so I take 60 grams now if you ordered the kit you had a little bag. This is not cocaine, okay? This is uh, Tylo's powder. This is a quarter of a teaspoon already pre-measured for you. But Tylo's powder, you know, can order this. Um, obviously, Tylo's on the on like Amazon, and uh, this is Tylo's powder, Confectionery Arts International one, or any brand can be used. But you can buy this on Amazon, and we also do sell Tylo's in a little uh, bag as well, which is uh, two tablespoons of Tylo's powder um, in here. And uh, so that would be, uh, as I said, it's only brand of Tylos or CMC. But what Tylos or CMC does, it firms up the fondant. Because fondant, a lot of people will sometimes try and use straight fondant in molds. And generally, it's going to be too soft. It's going to distort. So you normally want to firm it up a little bit. And another thing you can also do is uh, to make a comparable paste as far as consistency goes. You could take an equal amount, like so for example, say 30 grams of white fondant, 30 grams of white gum paste, combine those together. And that's what I call 50-50 paste, half fondant, half gum paste. And that would be comparable to modifying the white fondant. Okay, you're going to sort of, so depending on what I'm doing, I sometimes do with different combinations. So anyway, we're going to take the, um, the 60 grams of fondant. And this will be enough for the project. And then taking my little bag of the Tylos, okay? But as I said, you can, um, if you've got Tylos, just obviously measure out a quarter of a level teaspoon and put that into the paste. And then I'm going to take a sort of comparable amount, just do that by eye of vegetable shortening. So this is Crisco, for those of you watching in England or other areas, you know, white fat, like, uh, but now in the UK, you can buy Crisco from Tesco's online and things. Uh, but Crisco, um, for those of you watching from Europe and some other parts of the world that don't sort of use vegetable shortening like Crisco brand, uh, the difference is Crisco is a shelf stable product. So even if it's warm in your kitchen, you don't have to refrigerate it. Whereas England, like Trex, you have to keep it in the refrigerator. If you take it out, it gets very oily and very watery. But Crisco is more like butter. You can see it's sort of very creamy, a little bit like butter that's at room temperature. So um, that's what we mostly use here in the U.S. So quarter of a teaspoon of Tylos, quarter of a teaspoon of the shortening. Just combine those together. And what this is now has done is modified the fondant, okay? Now, sometimes I change the amount of um, Tylos depending on 
if I want this to dry a little quicker. This is actually a sort of a higher percentage than I sometimes use because I want the pieces to be dry. So tomorrow we'll be able to paint them and obviously um, they'll be dry to paint and whatever. So I take that and then I'm just going to put on a pair of gloves. Now I'm going to color this a dark cream color. Now I'm going to use, uh, this is like an Americolor brand. Uh, this is a gold uh, color. Don't the camera come in it's just coming in now all right so i'm using this is americolor gold this is going to give me a dark cream um alternatively you can use an ivory with some yellow all right so ivory and yellow this is all in your instructions or as i said um, a cream color and what i'm going to do is i'm going to just make this almost like a you want a sort of a fairly dark rich cream color so just mix this through and of course now in the United States you know they have a generic brand of uh, this similar container to Americolor in like Hobby Lobby so they have the gold the gold color as well those of you in England like companies like Sugar Flare have Cornish cream which is a Cartagena free one but you see you just want a nice sort of dark cream color okay and that will be the color we're going to use just going to take my bobs off but I use the um, as I said using the when you put them in a little plastic bag and things like that so these are mylar bags so I use these uh, for a lot of my gum paste and air drying clay and things flexi paste you get these on Amazon and again you just can get these in different sizes but mylar bags have a very good they're very thick and they're a really good place to uh, store the paste so it won't dry out so when you're working with modeling chocolate or anything like that, you put it in there, you're not going to have issues when you come to reuse it, that all being dry, okay? So that's uh, that's the first stage. Now what we're then going to do, um, so use some Maricolor Gold or Ivory Yellow and place in a Ziploc bag for a few minutes to firm up, all right? So you're just literally going to put that in a bag for a couple of minutes so that it just firms up a little bit. And then we can just bring in the mold. This is the mold I'm going to use. Um, this is my winter spice mold. Just wait for the camera to catch up with me. <laughs> so this is the winter spice mold. And the winter spice mold has got uh, three uh, components on here, three sort of different cavities. This, first of all, is a cinnamon stick, all right? So this makes uh, cinnamon sticks. So when you do this, now there are several ways you can use this. You could use it with isomalt. So what you want to use is like... Um, Use a chocolate color brown uh, isomalt and a little bit of orange in there as well. So you're going to make like a cinnamon color isomalt. And you can make these and then of course using a warm knife you can cut these in half. And you can use them and also you can cut on the videos that I show using this. You can cut it this way and that will make a single cinnamon stick. Well this is like obviously when you buy cinnamon it's rolled like this. And then there's the this part here which is the um, the main citrus slice. So this can be used to make... Um, obviously different get the book here. so this shows in the book and you can see here this shows the uh, different um, option you can have so you can make uh, here and you can see you can make oranges uh, you can make lemons limes pink grapefruit and you can of course do this with gold on the edge there's lots of fun ways of using this and this is really a very realistic way to make um, different cakes just going to show you on here so you see like this is for example a christmas cake um, that i have there where i've got sort of a wreath and this was all done with my flower pro molds and this is actually a modified fondant uh, so for example the pine cone here done in my pine cone molds and then the cinnamon stick the star anise which is used in a lot of asian cooking there's a star anise there and here you can see i've got the orange slices on there turn that around so you can see the orange slices on here, but it's a really, really fun mold and you can do different things with this and um, you uh, can obviously change out the color. So normally when you, of course, when you think of the zest of when you cut an orange or a lemon, you're going to have a sort of a layer of cream, like a creamy color. So that's why I start off with a cream color. And a lot of times when I'm painting things, I generally start off with cream rather than white because white is very stark. So that is why I colored the uh, modified fondant a cream color because it just gives me a little bit more of a natural base to be able to work on. So this is the mold, and I said this is a little one on the top here. This is a star anise, okay, um, on the mold. And um, 
So we're going to take a, a flat brush. I'm using, this is just a, a brush here used for stenciling. It's just a short bristle brush. But you can also just, if you have an old paint brush at home, um, just keep that for the shortening. And for a lot of the molds, I generally will take a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening. So I'm just going to take a little bit of shortening. You can just put it on the back of your hand. And I will just work that to really melt that shortening. And then I'm just using a little tiny amount. It's not very, very much. And I'm just going to sort of brush this into the mold. This just helps release with certain elements from molds. I don't use this on every mold, but some of the things I do with this, it makes it easier to release. And uh, so I put a little bit of shortening into there. And I rub the citrus part of the mold, my winter spice mold, with a little shortening. And using a short bristle brush, then measure off a number 11 small ball of paste. Now, um, the uh, here, we're going to take a... The size guide. Now the size guide came with a kit, but we also have this as a download. So again on nicholaslodge.com, you can download this as on the PDF on recipes and templates. You can download this onto cardstock and then cut around with an X-Acto knife around the holes. We also do sell on our website. This is a plastic size guide. This is part of my Flower Pro. But when you order anything, we include one of these with uh, your order anyway. All right, so if you were going to order the Winter Spice Mold, we will automatically include the cardboard one with that. So we're going to take a number 11 small. Now the size guide is what I use to in teaching. So in all of my hundreds of YouTubes and uh, videos and things, I use the size guide as a way and aid for my students to understand exactly what size ball I'm using. So here we're going to actually make a number 11 small. That means the number 11 wants to just go through the hole. All right, so that means, as I said, it just goes through the hole. So you see, it just is just a number 11 small size. As you will see later on uh, today and tomorrow, sometimes I use a regular size, which would mean if it said just 11, that would mean when you measure the ball, one third will be below the hole and two thirds above the top. All right, but if you watch any of my videos, you'll see that. But just make sure, as I said, that's uh, going to be the right size. Need a little bit more. But just wants to sort of go through freely, not sort of don't have to ram it through the hole. And that will be my size. Now, of course, if you're wanting to make more than one of these slices, you can keep your little pots under uh, little balls of paste under a pot, and then you can make three of these or however many you need to make. All right, so then when I use the paste, generally speaking, I what I call condition the paste. So I'm going to take just a little bit of shortening, a little tiny bit of shortening on my finger. So whenever I work with gum paste, 50-50 paste, modified fondant, flexi paste, I always just take a little tiny bit of, and I'm just going to massage this because this relaxes the paste. All right. And I'm going to roll that into a ball. And I'm just going to put a little bit of cornstarch onto this. Just dust a little bit of cornstarch corn flour. This is in a little um, uh, bag. And then I'm going to place this into the mold. So... And then you're going to dust with cornstarch and press into the citrus slice mold. I'm using a little cornstarch on this, which I don't always do, mainly because I want to press. It's quite thin in this part of the mold, okay? And so you take this, and you're just going to press this into the mold. And I'm going to use a cosmetic sponge. And here, I'm pressing it in to the edge. And of course, it's going to go in. There's like a channel around the edge of the mold, you can see here. So you're just going to press this into... A cosmetic sponge I find really works very well because also when I do things like my pine cones, if you use your thumb, it means you're going to have a sort of concave shape in the middle of your mold. So this gives you a nice flat part here. Do you have a question? We do have a question. Um, Janet is saying, uh, and she's asking, I have a couple of your molds. My question is, can I use ice malt on them? Yes, totally. Totally, yeah. yeah. Definitely. They work beautifully with ice malt. You can just pour it right in. You don't need to prep them with anything. And the detail picks up really beautifully. Yeah. They're very, very detailed, but yeah, isomol works perfect. Now, also here as an alternative, probably not with the project we're doing, uh, because it wouldn't necessarily dry uh, quickly enough. We could use modeling chocolate if you're doing flat citrus slices, or on cupcakes and things like that, you can use modeling chocolate. Now, um, if you watch my YouTube, which is referenced at the end of there, it does talk about um, other variations, like for example, when you make, so this is what we're making, a sort of cream colored one, but of course, you can make these and then you can dust them. But also, the other thing you can do is you can take your modeling chocolate a little bit smaller amount, like for example, a number 10 small, and you put it into the uh, middle of the mold. And then you roll a sausage of like a lime green, 
and then you just put the sausage of lime green around the outside and then press it in with the cosmetic sponge so when you take your lime slice out it will already have the green on the edge you see now that is a very quick way to do it if you're using for example going to use them to decorate like cupcakes um, this is a margarita cupcake um, so this is actually again shown on the video um, so this would be margarita cupcake so I've got uh, tequila in the buttercream and also margarita mix in the actual sponge as well in the sponge uh, base and uh, then you can do that and then uh, but on the video I show lots of different ideas and you can just talking about some fun things so four because you know if you take fresh lime it generally just dries out very quickly so all I've done here is you just take some lime green fondant and with the lime green fondant, I color it with a like an electric green color. And then I put a couple of drops of lime oil in here. So I use the Loran lime oil. And then I let that get hard. And then what you can do is just use a little grater. And so you grate that. And that will basically be lime flavored fondant. But it tastes like lime zest. And so you can sprinkle that on top of your buttercream. All right. So this is, a, as I said, a margarita cupcake. But when, when you do things like the cupcakes, because then all you have to do is literally, I just dust a little bit of chocolate brown or the autumn gold in the center, and then you can cut them into quarters or into little wedges. So you can make little tiny wedges as well. But also this is a great way to decorate like a key lime pie or key uh, lemon bars, you know, things like that. So of course you can make these, but these were actually made in modeling chocolate, these ones, all right? So it's sort of fun way to, to use the mold. Uh, for different um, other ways and then you can also use marzipan especially those of you watching from Europe so this is actually uh, is done with marzipan or almond paste and uh, again the, the marzipan or almond paste is pushed into the mold you use the number 10 small then you just use some green colored marzipan around the edge so you see when you take it out it's pretty much all the work is done on it all right so that's sort of another way you can use the use the mold if you have any questions let Certainly no, but I found there's that the ivory cream color is the best color to start off with as a base. Now, Sydney and I last year for cake flicks um, in the UK, um, they uh, had we did a video on a lemon martini, a sort of lemon drop martini theme. So actually, I made these ones um, in uh, paste, and then what I did is to cut a slit, and then Sydney made the isomol, um martini glass, and then they actually just slide that on the top of the martini glass. So it's a really, really cool way when you're doing a cocktail. Um, if you wanted to use one of the Simi Cakes martini glasses, you could then make this, and that will fit on the rim of the martini glass, okay? And some of you may have seen that video. It was a lot of fun to do, wasn't it, Sydney? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um but anyway but as i said check out the videos because it sort of shows different um you know different ways of using that so anyway once i've just got some lime there but you can do uh this is like for example an orange dreamsicle uh cupcake so that one um again i did a sort of an orange sponge cake and have a buttercream and then i just did some grated chocolate on this so just coming in for the camera so you can see there so as i said that's the orange slice and then these are actually gin and tonic cupcakes. So there I use some um, uh, gin um, in the actual cake batter and a little bit in the mascarpone cream cheese frosting on there. So this is a gin and tonic cupcake as well. So I talk about those on my YouTube. So some fun, fun ideas you can have, obviously, uh, for birthday parties, pool parties, things like that. So anyway, once we get to that stage, we're just going to release it from the mold. So literally, the way I do that is generally just peel this off and this will come out beautifully. But you see the detail on the mold is incredible. Now, um, you also, of course, can use this um, in, as I said, in isomalt. You could take this out. Then, of course, you could just paint that or airbrush the edge of it. But so this is going to give me. But what I'm going to do here. So when I do it for a cupcake, I would just cut that in quarters or in half. And then, or you can paint it and then cut it once it's, um, it's obviously painted, but then cut it up. But what I want to do is I want to actually also texture the back of this as well, because this is going to go for the orange slice. So of course, if it's in a, um, like a tropical drink, you're going to see it from maybe the side. So what I'm going to do is also texture the back of this. Okay. We do have one question. Yes. Uh, Jim is asking, besides using the Tylos in the paste, uh, any other considerations for keeping the decorations crisp in high humidity areas? 
Well, generally the Thai lows and the percentage I use, which is the quarter of a teaspoon to 60 grams, that is a quite a high percentage. It's bordering on towards a gum paste type of consistency. So that should keep you. But I mean, I, I generally keep like if you put these pieces, if you're having to make them in advance, you know, just keep them in like a plastic container. Uh, get some um, from Amazon. You can buy some little packs of silica gel. That's also great to use for sugar as well, especially if you haven't uh, sealed it with the spray lacquer. Um, and uh, you just get silica gel packs for food and you can put those into there it's good for pieces and that's going to help a lot and of course using a food dehydrator as well you can just kind of dry them off in the food dehydrator but usually once they're dry with the tire lows they're not going to be affected by humidity okay Perfect. and then Anne is asking are these recipes available anywhere maybe talking about the cupcakes um, I've got recipes on um, on the recipes and templates, but uh, yeah, it talks about the different recipes. But also, like for example, if you go on to Google and you just did gin and tonic cupcakes or margarita cupcakes, you know yes, you're going to find ready, yeah the sort of because uh, there's so many resources now. Um, okay. And then what I'm going to do, so you know, this is going to give you a citrus slice. But now what I'm going to do is um, fill the mold and then turn over and place back in the mold and press around this side mark the segments using the needle tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press this on back into the mold. And that's also with it be having a little bit of shortening in there because it means it doesn't sort of distort too much. So I'm just going to press around the side of here, sort of more so. And you're going to get that sort of, uh, the sort of the detail, the textual detail on here. And I'm going to take my companion tool, which is also known as Nick Stick, and I'm going to use that to just mark. So then we're going to just mark the segments using a needle tool. So what we're going to do is literally just going to use the needle tool. And this little stick is very flexible. It's great for flooding cookies and all sorts of things. And just sort of make some little additional marks. Remember, this is the back. And this is only necessary if you're doing something more dimensional. It's going to be standing up on the cupcake where you're going to see the back. Um, and then you're going to... Um, so this will be... And then you hollow the center with the ball tool end, so to the end of the little ball tool end, you just hollow that into the middle as well. All right, and then we're going to take that out, you see? So then you've got the sort of the textual detail onto here. And then we're going to make, um, so then we're going to, uh, this will be the back of the orange slice, and you only need to do this if visible. Um, and then you remove and you cut two holes using a number three tip or a, um, the straw. Now in the kit, there was a little straw. This is just a little cocktail straw. But if you have a number three piping tip, and what you're going to do here, you're just going to come in. So it says there, you're going to cut the two holes uh, two thirds of the way from the center. So you're going to come up about two thirds of the way from the center. You're going to cut a hole and then directly opposite that, you're going to cut another hole, okay? And obviously you can just take that little plug paste out but a number you can use a number three piping tip for that as well and then you're going to take your skewer so then we're going to um, then you're going to pinch to shape like a pringle so think of a pringle we're just going to sort of bend that like a pringle or a taco shell and I'm going to make this and then I'm going to thread an eight inch skewer so again in the kit there were two two uh, eight inch skewers you're going to put this through and you see how the the orange slice just sits there like that and then you're just going to put it to dry. So I'm doing just using a little dish that will just, uh, so it's suspended above the little dish, but it looks like a Pringle. But um, as I said, you can also use a crepe foam. So you could take a piece of crepe foam. This is a crepe foam former. Again, we sell these. Uh, you could put it on some crepe foam and just put it on there like that to dry. All right. Now, generally speaking, what I would do is put this in a food dehydrator on 115 degrees um, for two hours or leave to dry overnight. All right, you could put a fan on it. Also, for example, you can also put your oven on lowest setting um, and then switch the oven off and you can just put this in. Even in an oven with a light on, that will be warmth. You can just put this on a sheet pan that can go in the oven switched off with just the light on and that will be enough to um, actually sort of dry this, okay? But I said, if you have a food dehydrator, you can just put this in the food dehydrator as it is and that will just dry this off or as I said, on a little dish like that, okay? Um, and that means it's going to dry and you see how then it would dry actually in the correct shape um, like a, almost like a Pringle. Okay, any questions on that? No, we're doing good. Everybody okay? I love that. It's so pretty. 
And of course, you know when this is all finished. But on, on the videos I have on my YouTube video, like I have, for example, a YouTube showing um, mug cakes. You know, mug cakes, you buy the little packs in the grocery store. You put it in a mug. You put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. It makes a very quick little cake. But I show using a mug cake. And, and what you do is I then uh, take it out once the, you buy a mug, like from the dollar store. It's a great teacher's gift or neighbor's gift. Um, and then you put uh, buttercream on the top, the swirl of the buttercream, and then you use the uh, cinnamon stick. So if you make eye on the video, I show using these for chocolate, where I take um, just milk chocolate and add some orange powder color to it. So that makes the chocolate a cinnamon color. And I take them out, the chocolate mold, and I cut them in half with a warm knife. And then I put a half a cinnamon stick in the top of it, it look like a whipped cream. And then you just put some sprinkles on. And they also show another one, which is like an apple cider, a hot apple cider toddy. But what I actually do there is I use apple cider jelly. So I use a gelatin and actually make it with apple cider. Put that into like an apple cider mug, which is a clear glass mug. Again, put the whipped cream with buttercream on the top. And then I put the cinnamon stick. And I actually put some cinnamon into the chocolate as well. So it'll actually taste of chocolate. That's so it really just like a... So it's sort of just fun ideas for the holiday. But sort of give you give, give sort of ideas for teacher's gift. So that mold is called the winter spice mold. I just posted your uh, YouTube channel in the comments. Thank you so much, Sydney. All right. So... Anyway, so you're going to leave that to dry, all right? So I'm just going to leave this uh, to dry, and then I will put this in a food dehydrator later. It's just my food dehydrator. It's got a fan on it, so it's a little bit noisy. But now we're going to move on to the pineapple chunks, all right? So what we're now doing is we're recycling our fondant. And so now we're going to take the remaining cream paste, and we're going to color to a dark lemon yellow for the pineapple, right? Which I've already done, which is because of a little bit of time, and you've seen me color that already. So all you do is you take your cream once you've made your citrus slice, and see, it's also good when you do things like this. I often do this in flour making. By starting off with a cream base, we've added the, the cream color to it. Then now we have a cream. When you make a yellow, it's going to really make a nice, it's not so acidic. But I just put some lemon yellow uh, gel color um, into that and just make a sort of a dark yellow color. Uh, any lemon yellow will do for this, all right? So this is now ready to go. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to just take that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of cornstarch down. And I'm just going to roll this out so it wants to be about a quarter of an inch thick. All right, this is going to be the sort of thickness of the pineapple slice. All right, so we want to be about a quarter of an inch thick or thicker. It doesn't really matter, but just roll it out sort of uh, this level. And then we're going to take now a cutter. So for the pineapple chunk, so we're going to roll out, a, sorry, half an inch thick. Yeah, so this is half an inch. So I was written the wrong thing. So you can see that's about half an inch thick um, on my size guide. So on a ruler, so about half an inch thick. All right, and then, and of course you could do, if you wanted to, you could add like, come, there's a lot of companies that have flavorings, like for example, more than cake that Donna was using their royal icing, uh, the royal mix. They do some powder flavors, pineapple and lemon and things. You can mix that into the fondant as well, but you could use put a couple of drops of pineapple oil in here. You could even take some pineapple liqueur um, and uh, pineapple vodka and you put a little bit of that in, mix it into the fondant. And you might need a little bit of extra powdered sugar if obviously you use a lot of, uh, say, um, the uh, pineapple liqueur or vodka. But anyway, you could flavor this pineapple as well, which makes it real fun. And then uh, what we're then going to do is cut out with a one and three quarter, 45 millimeter round cutter. So this is just about one and three quarter inches. All right. So this is the, the cutter I'm going to use. All right. So it's a one and three quarter inch cutter, a round cutter. And uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this, because it doesn't have to be green. <laughs> and then just going to pop that out. All right. So this is going to give like almost like a biscuit uh, here. Put the yellow paste back into the bag here. And once the yellow paste back into the bag. So then what I'm going to do is going to take a shorter skewer. So I'm going to take, this is a, a six inch skewer. All right, five inch, six inch. Just make a hole in the middle. And then uh, you can put a little bit of uh, Crisco on the skewer because that makes it easier, it won't drag. And then I'm going to press this into the into the middle here like that but you see the Crisco will stop it sort of sticking there like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quilter I'll talk more about this in a second but this is a small continuous quilter you can see the really pretty cookies that this makes and this is what I'm going to use for the textural detail on the pineapple 
All right, this is a, a fun vein. Sydney and I have both used this, and he's used this with isomol. It looks really, yeah, really pretty. Cool. And you can actually also use it uh, pressed on the isomol, or you can actually pour the isomol into the mold as well. But um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the skewer into here. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the cross from one side to the other. So left to right or right to left, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to use a cosmetic sponge here. And the cosmetic sponge will... So put a little bit of pressure on there. It's going to roll across the top of this. Doesn't matter if you distort it a little bit. If you just run to the other end. And you see how this creates this really nice, like sort of pineapple texture. Okay. And you take the pineapple texture. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to then just use an umbrella tool. Now, most of you probably have one of these at home. It could be uh, sort of a, an Atico brand or it could be PME brand or Wilton brand. It doesn't matter. But it's got like a little star on the top of it. It doesn't matter whether you use a five or a six pointed one. And some of them are wider, more triangular on the shape. Like a lot of you have the tools that uh, Sydney uses, the blue and white Atico ones. But they have a bigger sort of, it's a bit more triangular, but it'll be fine. So what I'm going to do then is just going to uh, put this into, uh, cut that out, and then um, going to press an umbrella tool into each star-shaped center or mark with a companion. So all I'm going to do is just going to push this into the center of the, and the half ones, and this sort of gives this nice texture, and it looks really like a pineapple um, segment. Yeah, it's really lifelike. Yeah, and it's just a simple little tool there, but just put that, push that into there. And then you can, if you don't have one of those, you can literally just use your, your companion tool or a toothpick, just make some little marks into the bottom. But you just get this nice sort of textural detail for the pineapple slice, okay? Now, what I want to do is just put that in a little plastic bag. So I'm just going to put it onto a sill pad or a piece of fun foam into a plastic bag to stop this drying, okay? And then uh, next step is going to be to... Now this uh, mat, so this is, you see, the mat, and there are videos on this on Katie Sue Designs. That This is designed by Kerry Griffiths, who's an English uh, cake artist. Um, but this is, as I said, really, really nice for cookies, uh, veneers in fondant. But this is actually made, think of like wood flooring. The, you've got this, it connects together. So when you do this around the cake, you make another one and it just fits in to join. So the sort of the shape just joins it perfectly here. And this is the small one. There is also a big one as well, which can be used for a large pineapple. So if you're doing like a sculpted cake pineapple. And then also there is another um, another one. This is one of uh, 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 Kerry's as well. This is a continuous rattan. So this is going to look like rattan wood. All right, and this works really, really well with my bamboo mold. And this looks really, really good as well as a text. You could use this for a larger pineapple. But this is nice if you're doing like an Asian um, sort of themed cake or a sort of something with bamboo, tropical flowers on orchids. Um, and the, also the fun thing with these is you could, for example, take, fondant and you can press into this or cookie dough and then you can actually make for example like a flip-flop all right so you can do this and then of course you can cut one turn it over but you can actually use this is i did it in the rattan one just to show you but this is like rattan texture and so you then cut holes and then of course you bake your cookies and uh, donald was using i was talking about baking cookies. I, for my cookies, if this was cookie dough, all right, like Donald showed the turtle, I use, uh, these are uh, perforated mats, all right, so these is a new type of silk pad, but it's got holes in it, and two cookies. So again, if you go onto my um, YouTube, go onto nicholaslodge.com, download the cookie con, you, uh, the cookie con download, this is a seven page download, but uh, on there, there is the link to uh, this particular mat. It's a perforated silicone baking mat, but what it means, when you bake cookies on here, you never have any problems with bus uh, blistering or the cookie bunny being uneven. So when you actually peel the cookie off of this once it's cooled, it's can have a beautiful flat base with a, like a texture on it but it really really makes a very pretty cookie but they don't also spread so this is good for unusual shaped cookies that have a lot of detail in them because they won't spread but as I said I just did this in fondant just to sort of show you sort of give you an idea of what it looks like but um, as I said, you can texture it you make holes in there and then you could use an extruder and you could put the extruder there to make the straps of the flip-flop um, so you could use this as a top um, you could also use this as the bottom, uh, for example, on cookie, and then you could flood the top of this with royal icing, so you can make that as the base, because if you think about a flip-flop, 
All right, so flip-flops have, you know, sort of texturing on the bottom of them. So you could do that for the sort of bottom of the flip-flop. And then you could have a smooth top. But there's lots of fun things you can do with this mold. And then also, for example, if you do that in yellow in the same way as I showed you, and uh, for example, cut with an oval cutter and cut off the top and bottom. And in here I've used my, this is the Katie Sue uh, mini succulent mold, uh, which I use for succulents. But this one here, which is the aloe, all right, again, this is shown on my cookie con videos. This is the succulent pots, this is called. So on the website, um, as I said, it's succulent pots, Katie Sue succulent pots. But you just press green gum paste or modified font into there. And you see that makes the top of the pineapple. You may have seen a beautiful cake done by Mary Virginia Gage, who's one of my, uh, actually has been my intern assistant and uh, for many, many years. And Mar Mary Virginia lives in Macon, Georgia. But uh, she did a really beautiful cake the other day, which she posted on the Simi Torch, as uh, the Simi Torch team. And that had sort of pineapples and a flamingo and things on. But this could be really cute on a cupcake, or you'd use this on a larger scale on the cake. All right. So as I said, that's done the little pineapples uh, done with uh, with that same mat. Okay. So that give you just some ideas of things to work with. But any any questions you have, just let let me know. And then doing good so far. Okay, so that's the um so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna now take uh two number eight small balls of paste. And uh, so then we want two number eight smalls. So again we're gonna use a number eight small. So that means a number eight that goes through the and you see the paste is now, um, when you work with that cream case, when you first add the tallows, it will feel quite soft, but now it's sort of firming up a little bit. So then we want number two pieces are going to go through number eight small. And then we're going to pop those under a little pot, stop some drying. And these are going to be used for the veneer for the top part of the pineapple. So what we're now going to do is going to take the same mold. Now when you finish with these molds, you can put them in a dishwasher. Um, you can also put a little bit of dish soap on there, use a nail brush. But as I said, they're, they're made to go in the dishwasher, so they're totally dishwasher safe. And of course you can use them for ice and mold and baking cookies and stuff like that. Um, but as I said, we've already got the little bit of Crisco on there, so there should be enough on here. Um, if it does stick, put a little tiny bit more on. And then as I said, just wash them. Don't leave that Crisco on them because it will go rancid eventually and you're going to get almost like a yellow wax looking effect on there. So all I'm going to do is going to put one of them under the pot. And then I'm going to take this, again, just put a little bit of cornstarch onto that. Just going to press this in the mold. And then I'm going to press this. So this would be actually how I do the model in chocolate one. Or if when I want to do the green on the edge of it, you see you're using a smaller, you can use like an eight small size there. And you see you're just going to come to the edge of the mold here. And then you just roll a thin sausage, or if you have a clay extruder, like a Makin's extruder, put your green uh, modeling chocolate or fondant in there and just extrude a sausage around, press it in, when you pop it out, it's going to have the color on the edge. So you see how you've just, but we've just actually thinned that to the edge there. Um, so you can see that that doesn't go all the way to the edge. And then what we're going to do is, um, so now we're going to uh, take... This, press in the center of the citrus mold, this will achieve the thin veneer. Carefully remove from the mold, place onto the green side of the mini pad or silicone mat and work with the edge with the using the needle tool end of the companion tool. So I'm going to use, you can use a mini pad. This is the no flip pad. You can also use actually like a silicone mold. So you could do this on the back of your, um, for example, this is the little quilter. So again, we're just gonna peel this off. I'm just going to put this onto here. So you see you've got the thin. And I'm going to use my, this is my uh, companion tool. So I'm just going to go around the edge and I'm just going to do a little bit of feathering because this gives you this sort of little bit of texture. <coughs> Excuse me. For the pineapple. So this actually looks like, you know, dried pineapple slices. And you know, a lot of that's pretty much in trend now, dried flowers and, and yeah. dried fruit, you know, and that this looks really nice because when you use real pineapple slices, you know, they can get sort of moist and soggy, same as citrus as well. But so you could do these for a wedding cake, for decorating the side of a wedding cake. 
and they look beautiful with uh, an isomalt as well. So then what we're going to do, we're going to take our pineapple part out. All right, so we're going to take this out, and then I'm going to rub a little bit of shortening, a little bit of Crisco onto the edge there. And I will just take this and put this onto the edge. All right, so this is going to give you that beautiful sort of natural, um, like pineapple uh, sort of look. So you um, <coughs> so you play, and then you're going to remove the pineapple, rub the top surface with some shortening, and carefully place the disc on top. And um, then uh, then you're going to press the ball tool or the companion tool in the center and repeat on the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to just use that and just going to make a little cavity into the middle. All right, and then you can just obviously should be okay, but you can just pop it back into the bag while you do the other one, and then you repeat that which just like magic of television one I made earlier. Okay, so. So I said, then you just repeat the other one. If you don't have a, a companion tool, uh, you could also use for that, you could take, oh, thank you so much. You could just also use a veining tool, okay? But you just want to just sort of make this, and then this will blend the two sort of uh, surfaces together well all right and then you're going to take that out and we're going to turn this over and then i will put a little bit of crisco over the surface of this and see and that gives you that natural sort of natural edge on the and then you're going to take a little uh, kitchen knife just a small kitchen knife and just sort of cut that into quarters. So you're gonna cut that into quarters. Cut that into quarters. So this will actually give you enough for four segments. So you can of course make four and then you can keep those because you could use this next year or in five years time because although they're gonna get hard, you know, this is just fondant. So this is gonna give you the sort of the piece you see, so it's gonna give you that nice natural look. Um, and then you take the so once we've done that, uh, cut into quarters using a small kitchen knife, and then we scratch some horizontal lines onto each segment using a cookie scribe or the needle tool or the, uh, the companion tool. So I'm going to use a cookie scribe here Take the lid off of that. And then you're just going to just, just scratch them. This is going to give some textual detail onto this. But you could also do this with your companion tool if you have it as well. Okay. one so just scratch and lines because if you use straight fond and it will be a little bit too soft it's going to distort and of course also it would take a lot longer to dry as well so that's why I prefer to you know mostly most of the things I do I use the modified fondant so of course you could do this on the other two pieces as well um, then what we're going to do is um, we're then going to take the Using the pointed end of a bamboo skewer, drill through each segment from the point and place into a food dehydrator. So again, you can put a little bit of crisco onto there. So you're then going to just drill through the, to make your pieces. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, is just, just sort of wiggle the, the bamboo skewer so that you have a definite defined um, little uh, hole in the middle there. And then you can just pop these, again on a piece of fun foam or something, and pop these into your food dehydrator, so they will be ready. And of course, that's what they will look like. So when they're all painted, you're gonna get a nice color. These are all painted, as you'll see tomorrow, with Sydney's Simi Splash Airbrush colors. Um, and that gives a really nice, realistic look to the coloring of the pineapple. Okay, so that really brings it to life, and you'll see all of that tomorrow. And then the last part of the um, uh, fruit skewer is going to be for the cherry. So what you can do is if you then with your yellow that you have left, now you're going to need a little, if you're going to make an orchid, you just need a number one size piece of paste. So just reserve a little bit of yellow paste, but you can take the whole of this, or of course you could take just a number 10 size. So this would be uh, for the cherry. So this is going to be a number 10 small. Now we don't always use small sizes, but uh, it's just in this case. So this would be 
the size of a cherry okay so that again just wants to just go through the hole and then what you would do is put some gloves on you then color that red okay so you just want to make it a red color and the yellow will be fine i mean it's a base and then alternatively you could also use uh, flexi paste now flexi paste is a starch based paste um, so this comes in uh, pink and uh, red and so this is the as i said the red flexi paste so i just use this I've already mentioned one, so this is the red flexi paste, but this could just be the modified form as well. Could also use a red gum paste here. And the flexi paste, as I said, this is a starch based product, so you're just gonna just work a little bit of shortening into this. And then what we're gonna do is for the cherry, so you're gonna roll into a ball and then gonna mark an offset line. Um, so the, the offsets on one side of the cherry using the shaft of the companion tool. All right, so you make a nice ball of uh, paste. All right, and then I'm going to take my companion tool. And then what I'm going to do here, using the shaft of the companion tool, I'm going to just make it like offset. So I'm not going to go down the middle. I'm just going to go to sort of one side slightly like this. All right, so you're just going to do the, the shaft of the companion tool. So you make the sort of the shape of the cherry. And uh, then with the cherry, we're going to, um, so they're going to hollow the top with the square end of a bamboo skewer. So we're going to hollow the top of this with the square end of a bamboo skewer. So I'm just going to put that into the center. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a real cherry stem. Now, um, this is actually uh, the stem of a cherry. So obviously they're in season at the moment. So just buy some cherries. Obviously this was done. I actually put these together last week. So when I took these off the cherries, they're sub there obviously have dried now. And you can just, you know, take all your cherries before throwing them away as a way to recycle. And then the thing is, is this would just go into the top of the cherry. So you're going to then, um, insert a cherry stem. Um, or an apple stem and then this is actually an apple stem so from an apple so you can use an apple stem as well that also works really well alternatively you could also of course uh, take a little bit of isomalt and pull that cut it with scissors you could also use some wire covered with brown floral tape and you could use that as well but I'm going to use the cherry here and uh, so then you're going to um, and then you're going to insert that into the top so here I'm just going to insert that into the top of the cherry all right, so just insert that into the top of your cherry. And obviously this looks very realistic because it is an actual cherry there. And just continue your... And then I'm using a square end of my uh, bamboo skewer. Make a hole in the base with the pointed end of the skewer and then dry in crate foam. Okay, so with the pointed end of your skewer. But just remember, if you put a little bit of Crisco in it, you're not going to have issues. So just make a little point in the bottom part and you see this is going to be the cherry um, that will go and then when you dry that you want to put that onto generally some crepe foam because then you won't have an issue with a square flat bottom on there so you just put that in your crepe foam and again that can just dry um, overnight or you could put that in your food dehydrator the food day dehydrator that i use in most of my classes those of you who came to the retreat is the Excalibur one, which is more like an oven where you slide shelves in. So I use that a lot. But as I said, um, there's obviously different types. But also, as I said, you could just leave this overnight and it will be fine. And then we'll just dry um, for your cherry. Okay. So any questions, Sydney? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. And then, of course, you have so you'll have some. Um, yellow paste over so you could make some you know like extra pineapple slices and I said you'll have enough there to make two or three of the uh, slices for the citrus so you can make two or three of those and have them and then you could do a lime one and a lemon one you can color those up but as that you now know the technique of how to make those all right so next I'm going to move on to show you how to um, so the fruit color how to make a umbrella now the inspiration for our piece was um, was a paper umbrella so these ones i found were really cute they're like a hibiscus flower inspired one of course paper umbrellas come in different shapes and sizes and things but this little one again those of you who ordered the kit uh, you've got two of these so you're just going to take the elastic band off of these and then just obviously open this up a little bit and is loving that you're following the instructions that you gave them so that way uh, no step can be missed and they know what to do in order thank you mm -hmm. All right, so what you're going to do is going to open up the paper umbrella. 
And if you're busy and you want to, just use paper umbrella in the finished piece, you know, because obviously that's realistic looking. And uh, this is a paper. But what I'm going to do is going to actually show you how to make a paste version of this. So this is a slightly smaller, but this is actually made with a blossom cutter. But this is the sugar version of the umbrella. Um, so what you're going to do is um, when you've got your umbrella to that stage, you're going to stick that into a cake dummy. So just put that into a cake dummy um, or a, a piece of styrofoam, styrofoam block. Because what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the blossom shape on top of that to dry. And I found that worked really well. You know, I played around with different ways of making this, but this worked really well. So then um, what we're going to do is uh, for the sugar paper umbrella, we use a paper umbrella, open up and push into a styrofoam block or cake dummy. I roll out flexi paste. Now what I've done is I've used the pink flexi paste. All right, this is the pink color flexi paste, which is the color of the flexi paste. All right, um, so really fun color and very nice complimentary color. When we did the retreat um, in April, we, we made in the retreat the little hibiscus. So these little hibiscus were made with the pink, uh, the peony pink flexi paste, you see? And in making sugar flowers, this this means the actual petals feel like real petals. So you can actually, this was made in April, but you can see how I can still sort of reshape them. And so it makes a very realistic looking flower. And it's sort of an interesting property and it can be mixed with regular gum paste as well. So it gives you still a little bit of flexibility. Um, but as I said, um, I use this a lot for my classes. So what I've done is I've rolled out some paste now. Um, I've got in here, you roll out the paste freehand or with a pasta machine. All right, so you just roll this out. I've rolled this out number six. So I'm using uh, for KitchenAid pasta machine, I would use number three, then number six. Or just really roll this out as thin as you can make it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of cornstarch down so it's not, not sticky. Okay, and then I'm going to use my, so these are my uh, Flower Pro Blossom Cutters. And uh, this is on the supply list. I'm using a medium size one. There are many brands like this. You know, you may have a um, PME one or an FMM one or a generic set. It doesn't really matter. But this one here um, is going to be what we're going to use. So this is, um, I said roll out. So this is approximately 90 millimeters. All right. So that's 90 millimeters. So nine centimeters across from the, on the widest point. And uh, so that's what we're going to use. And here, I'm going to take cutter and cut that out so this is going to cut out the blossom shape I put my excess paste in the back and so I go through number three then number six cut out a 90 millimeter medium size rose cutter and then mark the center point with the needle tool so I'm just going to mark the center point approximately freehand with the needle tool so I know where the center is there then cut a hole with a number seven tip so you're going to use a number seven icing tip or again in the kit that I I did you can also use a straw so you can use a straw like just a regular drinking straw um, they they work well as well um, and uh, also Zaxby's have just introduced some Eco-friendly straws and they're in green as well. So if you eat at Saxby's, they have this sort of fabulous green straws. So pick up a bunch of those when you go into Zaxby's. But what we're going to do here is going to cut out the little hole in the center there with the straw. But as I said, a number seven tip will also work well. All right. And then I'm going to put this onto a veiner. Now you can use like a pedal veiner. I'm going to actually use my fan veiner. Those of you that came to the retreat, if you bought the peony set, uh, the Flower Pro peony set, this is the peony back veiner. So really anything that's got a veining on, or you can use my also my ultimate blossom, my ultimate uh, petal veiner, which is almost like a big blossom shape as well. But what I'm going to do here, and this is really going to emulate the almost the paper texture of the umbrella. And just give that nice natural effect. And then tomorrow when we paint this, we'll use the uh, Sydney's uh, base white, and we'll actually paint that sort of top part there with the base white. So then what we're going to do is uh, then we're going to then we're going to press each pedal onto the fan veiner by placing the hole over the pointed end of the fan veiner. So then what I'm going to do here, place this on here. So this wants to just go, so the, the fan veiner just wants to be visible in the hole there. I'm just going to press that onto each of those. 
This is the second one. But you could do this with gum paste as well. And you can also do this with a modified fondant. So you could take a little bit of, uh, you know, more fondant and you could do some of that. Remember, if you want to do a smaller quantity, I use 60 grams with a quarter of a teaspoon. You could use 30 grams, which is basically an ounce, because one ounce is 28.5 grams. And then this is the fourth one, and then the fifth one. All right, so these are going to, so you just sort of like almost the point of the, is going to be lined up in the little window there. All right, and then we're going to, once we've done that, uh, press it on the top of the round cosmetic sponge, turn over and frill the edge using the shaft of the companion tool. So then we're going to turn it over and then I'm going to use my uh, little, use my foam pad here. And then I'm going to use this, so this is on the side, I'm going to just use this and um, just back and forth a little bit and then what that's going to do is going to give you a little bit of and you can do this even on the vena as well, just to show you here. You can actually hold this on the vena and just do this on the back of the vena. And so you see how you're just going to roll back and forth with the shaft of the companion tool. And that's going to give you that little bit of a, a frilling, a soft frilling like almost we'd have on a rose and things. Um, someone was asking about the pink color that you have. What was the name of that color? It's Peony Pink. Pre uh, that's the pre-color this is the pre-color because the flexi paste comes in um, the pink and then it also comes in uh, uh, the, the red and then it also comes in a green now on um, that is we don't have on the website at the moment because unfortunately next Friday you know we go back to Atlanta Monday we're leaving on Friday and that's the pink I was using peony pink okay uh, we're leaving for uh, to drive to Reno for cake expo which is going to be the following week in Reno that's a uh, um, but as I said, we sort of uh, have all that stuff. We have got more coming. But Sugar In products you can buy. Um, their distributor is actually in California. So Sugar In um, NA, which is Sugar In North America. I'll put the link up there when I finished, okay? But so you see how you're going to get a little bit of movement on the edge of it. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. So this is the side with the veining. You see, and then I just drop that on the top of the umbrella. And you see that will just actually rest on there to dry overnight. So you see your ampule paste is just sort of dried on the umbrella. So that means it's going to dry in exactly the right. So if you wanted to make the umbrella a little bit more closed up, you just close up your umbrella. So you can make it to whatever stage you want to. Okay? It really looks real. Beautiful. But sometimes, you know, these things, you sort of play around with them and find the best way to do them. I tried making formers and things like that. But uh, this was the best way that I found. Now, an alternative method you can use to make the umbrella, um, let's get in my, in here, um, is you can take a, and also, so if you don't have a paste or a blossom cutter, you can cut out a four inch uh, circle. So this is a four inch cookie cutter. So what it is, I put this on top of a flex frost sheet. And um, so you're just gonna put this on and obviously use a cutting mat on here. So what you would do is then you would uh, use an exacto knife. So I'd obviously cut with my exacto knife, cut around the four inch size cookie cutter. Okay. I keep looking over because we have magic mic over there. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I think it's probably started looking up here. <laughs> and but um, so once you once you have cut that out, this will give you your shape. Now the flex frost sheets are obviously these are a little thicker. You can also do this wafer paper as well. All right, and so what we do there is you take this. Now you're going to take the four inch circle, all right, and then all you're going to do is just fold the four inch circle of paper into, into quarters, and then one of the quarters you take out, and then you would put that on top of your round of your wafer paper, and then again you just take your knife and then you cut there and cut there. So this is three quarters of a circle. Now, um, on your, in the download on nicholasfudge.com, there is also a recipe there for um, for flexi glue. Now, flexi glue is a product. So this is a recipe on uh, recipes and templates. So flexi glue. Um, this is a, a a glue made with flexi paste. All right. So what you do is you take a half a teaspoon of hot water, 
and you take a, a number six, six grams or a number 10 size. So when you measure that on the size guide, you would measure one third below two thirds above, but you take a ball of, um, or a six grams of white flexi paste and you put it in a little silicone bowl. You add a half a teaspoon of water, hot water, just from the faucet is fine. And then you microwave that. It doesn't need to be boiling. And then you microwave it for 10 seconds. Now that's going to make almost a slurry. If you think about making a gravy or making a custard, um, you know, you're going to thicken it with cornstarch because it's a starch based paste. So it's going to thicken it up, taking a little spatula or a knife in a silicone bowl. You're going to mix this up. And generally uh, that, as I said, is going to soften it like almost a slurry. And then what you do is you add, um, then you, uh, once you put that out, use a small spatula mixed together. And then what I do is I scrape it out onto the table and I just paddle it on the table and it's going to make it smooth and creamy. It's going to be quite thick. You put it back into the bowl and then you add another half a teaspoon of hot water. You mix this well, mix that through and that's going to make almost like a roux um, in a gravy or that. Then you add uh, 50 mils or a quarter of a cup or two fluid ounces of hot water. And uh, so you put hot water into there. Just mix that up with your spatula and then you're going to be, go back in the microwave for 20 seconds and then you take it out, use a whisk and then what I normally do is I would strain that through a tea strainer and there is a video on my YouTube channel of making flexi glue but what that is, this is flexi glue here which you can store in a, so in a little container here be to see. And what this is going to look, it looks almost like a sort of a custard or a gravy. If you thicken gravy for Thanksgiving with starch, you know, cornstarch, that is flexi uh, glue. Now, flexi glue is also wonderful to use for wafer paper. So those of you who do wafer paper flowers, this is really, really good as a bond because it stays flexible as well, uh, which means if you wire the, um, wire the uh, flowers, they're not going to have problems with the leaves or the petals breaking when you try and move them. And so the flexi glue works really well. Um, and so what you need to do is use, um, for example, a paper clip. You can use, uh, you know, bulldog clip like this. And then what you'll do is, because I'm actually going to make, this is just another way you can make the umbrella. So I'm going to take my flexi glue. But remember, this is starch base. Now on the, on the uh, YouTube video, when you watch it, um, you can add extend it. This is a potassium sorbate. This is a mold inhibitor. So this is used for edible glues, but this is also used in candy making, for example, for bonbons and certain candies. It stops any mold uh, growth. And so you can put three drops of this in, and it means you have a shelf-stable product. Um, if you don't have the potassium sorbate or extend it, you can just uh, keep this in the fridge when you're not using it, because if not, eventually it will go moldy. But what you can do here is you can just brush a little bit of the the flexi glue onto this you see and then I make my this will be my top of my paper umbrella okay and of course you could do you know all different fun ones it's a polka dot so I picked this one because it's a uh, some that Deb gave me from Icing Images, very kindly. So uh, obviously these are really, really fun uh, colors, but you can obviously use your printer and you can do different designs that fit in with like a Gamana stripe or something like that. But so the Flexi Glue is very useful. So I use this in when I make bows and things like this. And on the YouTube video, I talk more about that. But because you've used regular glue or, for example, egg white in sugar flour making, it doesn't, once it's dry, it's not flexible. Whereas this means you could take a bow, make it two or three days ahead, and then when you put it on the cake, you can mold it to the shape of the cake, and the glue will stay flexible. Okay, so it's a flexi glue. It's starch based, just like wafer paper is. So when you use it on any of the icing image sheets, it's also going to work very well as well. All right, so that's the, um, that's the, now we'll do the second part of the umbrella tomorrow um, because I'll show you how to make the wire frame because what we're going to do is going to make a wire frame and put it with white floral tape and then paint that. So we'll do that part tomorrow once that's dry, okay? So that's the flexi glue. Just going to clean up a second and then I'm going to go on to show you the last part here is going to be the uh, dendrobium orchid. And then we have a, about a 15 minute break after that and those show will be on 315 is that correct yep um so we're going to move on then to the last part which be the dendrobium orchid um now often you see in tropical drinks you often see orchids 
use. Uh, this is just a silk one, but you know, for example, this is Dendrobium orchids. They're sort of a small orchid, also commonly known as a Singapore orchid. But Dendrobium orchids are very, very popular. They're also, um, as with most orchids, they are an edible uh, flower as well. So if you go to often an Asian, especially a high-end Japanese restaurant or Asian restaurant, Chinese restaurant, you often get used, uh, they use uh, Dendrobium orchids as garnish on the plate, you know, with dessert. They use it, for example, on soup, um, on a tray of sushi and things like that. But a Dendrobium is a really pretty orchid. Now, the Dendrobium orchid is made with my... Just move these out of the way. Yeah. That is, is made with my... I'm going to show you the, um, using, talking about the orchid mold, and then I'm going to show you also using a little cutter. This is my dendrobium orchid. This is my ultimate orchid mold. Now, this is a, um, a t sort of a, basically a two part set. It has the two parts of the mold and also has the back veiner. Now, this veiner is actually, this uh, mold is my most expensive flower pond mold. Um, it's on sale at the moment, um, but I said this is normally $49.99, which sounds a lot of money, but this with this orchid mold, we'll make five different types of orchids and five different buds. So when you think about that, it's $10 per orchid. It's not very expensive. But uh, as I said, this is an expensive mold because obviously the amount of silicone, the detail in the mold. But this will make um, five different types of orchid. Um, so this makes Oncidium uh, orchid, which is popular in Thailand. This is sometimes known as the golden rain orchid, the dancing lady orchid, because it looks a little bit like a dancing lady. This looks almost like a dress, and that's the um, Oncidium. Then this is the then the the, uh, the Phalaenopsis, which is the popular orchid. You know, a lot of like grocery stores, like Publix and things, often have you know the uh, Phalaenopsis or moth orchid. Um, then it has the Cymbidium, which is also known as the boat orchid. Uh, this is Cymbidium orchid here, very very popular for wedding corsage and things. This is Dendrobium. So of course, if you make these for a wedding cake, you can make these with the um, with the spray and then of course the beautiful buds because that, that mold has everything. It has the bud mold, it has the column, it has all of what you need to make the orchid. And then the last orchid on here is the Vanda uh, orchid. So this is the Vanda orchid, which is the purple one here. All right, and that's what that back veiner is for, for the Vanda, because they have a very unusual veining. But um, so when you make this orchid, I'm just going to show you the, so I'm just using this part of the mold. So as I said, we have this on sale, so you will get basically $9 off of that. So uh, $4.90 for, $4 for the 20% discount. So you get this for like $39 instead of $49. So it's a good time to buy that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the uh, mold. I'm going to use a piece of spaghetti. All right, now I do a lot of my, um, for example, for cupcakes, things like that, and especially something that somebody is going to consume, like when I make a little, for example, um, unicorns or anything like that, and I'm going to be putting those into a cupcake. A lot of times I would use, um, I would use, <coughs> sorry, let's have a drink of water. They're loving the umbrella specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pig is just so eye-catching too. Yeah, but it's so, so very easy to use. But so we're going to use uh, size cracker. Sorry, got so many things here. <laughs> That's my little measuring guide. Would you get me one off the table, Sydney? I think yeah. there's one on the the back of that table. It's one of the one of the size guide. Is there one in on the table there? Do you see one? Oh, fabulous! Thank you. So what we're going to do? We're going to use a piece of spaghetti. So I'm going to cut that to about two inches long. All right, or longer. Whatever. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to cut that to two inches long, and then I'm going to take... So this is white flexi paste, all right? Now, you could do this in gum paste as well. This is white um, flexi paste or gum paste. And I'm going to do a number... So this is a number four small size, so this means it just goes through the number four hole, all right? And I'm going to show you also a freehand one as well. So if you have a cutter at home, you can, be able to use that. I'm going to take a little bit of the flexi glue. Now, if you haven't made flexi glue, you could just also just take literally just take the recipe, the water, and the um, the flexi paste. Just microwave that. It doesn't matter if it's a bit lumpy for what we're doing, but just put it in a little pot and use that. But as I said, if you make it properly, it will be very smooth and creamy. That's why I usually just go through a tea strainer. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flexi glue on here. 
and you're just going to insert the spaghetti into there and make it to the length of the center which is half an inch long all right so you make it to this column this is the column of the orchid here the little column part there and you place the spaghetti into here and we're just going to press this into the mold all right and you just press that into the mold there um so then you're going to insert a number four ball of place mold into a column the length of the mold press into the mold uh using a dresden tool or ball tool so you're going to go into the little ears so this is a little bit like almost like Mickey Mouse ears. So you just press that in with a Dresden tool. So this goes into the little, little sort of ears on the side there. Now also on my, um, if you go to katiesuedesigns.com forward slash flower pro, I'll put this once I finish my demo. Uh, that is where you'll find also house all of my full YouTube videos for flower pro. So katiesuedesigns.com then forward slash flower pro. Okay, and uh, the, so there is the full instructions for all of the, um, obviously all the orchids, but also the book that I'm using here. This is book number three. So this is the um, book number Flower Pro Volume 3. And again, these are of course on sale, you know, I said everything is on sale until Monday night. All right, so Flower Pro Volume 3, that will go through because that has the poppies and it has the fall leaves, the sunflowers, garber daisies and all of those things. But there are, of course, also um, 80 free YouTube videos for Flower Pro as well. So you're just going to fill that up to the sort of the, the, the size of the mold. Um, then we're going to um, press into there, remove and cut the ears on a round cosmetic sponge. So you're just going to remove that and you see you have a little bit like Mickey Mouse ears onto there. Just press that a little bit hard. And then you're going to just cup those. So taking your little ears, the so two little ears there. So I'm just going to cup there and cup there. So I'm just going to cup with a little tiny ball tool. So you see that actually sort of gives you the little cup shape and you fold the ears in. All right. So that's going to make your little what we, what we call the column. Okay. And then just at the top part there, you're going to hollow on my finger to make a little tiny cavity there and then I'm what I'm going to do is just going to take a little piece of the yellow uh, sorry I'm losing things today <laughs> oh there it is and of course you could also make these in isomal you could put these onto wires but you can make isomal orchids as well and I take a Number one piece. So this is just a small piece of yellow. Now when, when you're using the size guide, you know, when it says, for example, number one, you see that just sits onto the top of the ball. So there's about a third of the yellow below the ball hole and then two thirds above. So remember everything we've used up till now is all being small size. That means it's gone through the hole, but this, this size is just a regular number one. Okay, and then what we're going to do, we're going to use this little part here um, on the right hand side of the mold. Um, you're going to have these little, um, this is the pollen tract, there's bigger ones. I also use these for dragonfly eyes and bumblebee eyes as well. So when I make a dragonfly, I would make these and that makes the eyes of the dragonfly or the uh, butterfly. Or the, um, and you're just going to put the little piece of yellow paste into there and that will fill the mold up level. You can take come out of the mold so this will give you the looks like two little um, eyes or like a little ball there and then you're going to take your plexi glue and I lift the little eyes up and I put the little eyes in that little cavity there. Now I will send, I will take some photographs and send you these so you've got sort of reference for that, all right? Now if you, if you're gonna do, uh, if you wanted to do a freehand version of this, what you're gonna do, you're gonna do the same. You're gonna take your number four small, just put it on the spaghetti. Don't be too rough with the spaghetti because remember it will, it will break. Make this about half an inch long, all right? So this wants to be about half an inch long. So from top to bottom, it's about half an inch. And then what you're going to do here is just going to just flatten that. And then you're just going to pinch like Mickey Mouse ears, not Dumbo the elephant. Okay. So you're just going to pinch like, like almost like the little 
Mickey Mouse ears at the side there. So you just pinch one ear one side and one ear the other side. And you can just hollow the head part there. So you see it looks like a little, like two little ears, an ear here and an ear here. And then you're just going to, as I said, just going to take those, fold those in a little bit. But you know, for what we're doing here as well, it doesn't really matter because there are many, you know, there are thousands of varieties of orchids, so we may have some new hybrids. All right, so then you're going to take your number one and just put that onto my finger. All right, and then what I'm going to do here is make a freehand version of that. So with your number one, and I'm just going to roll back and forward with my companion tool. So you see how that's to divide it to make the same sort of like little eyes, okay? And then we put a little bit of glue onto there. And I said I will put this. So that would be like how you make the column. So this one is in a mold, this one is just freehand, and it doesn't matter if it doesn't look exactly like it. And then usually I would just pop those in the food dehydrator. I've got obviously some. I've got one underneath. Now the difference is also the flexi paste. It sort of has a very unique property that regular gum paste would almost like if you work on it too soon will come off. But this has a little bit more structural integrity and strength. Okay. Now what we're going to do is then next I'm going to show you the mold. So then we will work on the. So then in the. In the mold there for the uh, for the orchid's throat, we press a number six ball of white paste, and you can put a little bit of uh, shortening on this if you want to. A lot is going to depend depend on what your paste you're using, because sometimes with cr uh, traditional gum paste, you might want to put a little shortening. And if we're using commercial gum paste, like you know satin ice commercial gum paste, a little bit softer, just put a little bit of shortening into there. But what we're going to do here, just going to press this in with the cosmetic sponge just stay within the perimeter of the mold and this will be how you would so you just fill in the mold up let's see how you just sort of fill the mold up so you're filling the mold up the shape up up there um, then you press the number six press onto the back piece with a van, fan veiner is optional so I'm going to use my fan veiner the point of the fan veiner is going to go at the point of the throat what that means is we've now veined the back of this as well. So you see how I veined the back of the, the throat. And then what we're going to do is going to um, remove, turn over and frill and, and frill the top bone on the firm side. Part of that. So you're going to turn this over. And you can put this onto here. All right. And so then we're going to then remove and turn over and fill the top. So this should be actually part of the, the petal here. So this part here, so that should be, sorry, I didn't check that was the typo, but as at the top part, uh, the, the lobe, which is this, the lobe here, it shouldn't be bone, it should be lobe. On the green firm side, um, we'll use a cosmetics band, cut the two side petals, all right? So you can take your, so again, you can frill this, like we did the citrus slice, just frilling that around. And then on the cosmetic sponge, you can just cup those. So just cup the, so I'm just cupping from this side to this side. And you see this gives you your, this gives you your, the throat. All right, so you're gonna get all your nice veining onto there. And then what I do is just gonna take, take this. So this is the one that I've just made, you see, and so, but you know, if you just dry it for 30 minutes or so, so if you're gonna, if you are gonna make one of these today, then you can make the column. You could actually sort of even start off with that if you have make the column, then just put it in the food dehydrator, and then later on this evening you can finish this off. So you're just going to take the little throat, and then you're just going to attach that to the and wrap that around. So you make it almost like a sort of an ice cream cone that would just wrap around there, like so, and you just put the little throat down, and that will be the little throat of the orchid. Okay, and then what they usually do is on this is just take in I just place it into a like for example a crepe foam so it just you see the actual throat is going into the inside of the crepe foam so we just dry that sort of correct angle okay um and if you don't have crepe foam you could use 
uh, for example a piece of sponge and literally just put it on the edge of the sponge so that will obviously almost like just wrap around the edge of the sponge like this all right and again that can go in your food dehydrator because we won't put this together till um, later and then we put the we do the back of this now for the back of the orchid we're going to use this is the first part we're going to use all right so for the back of the orchid the back petals which are made totally separate roll in number seven small flexi paste into a sausage of the length of the base of the mold now we're going to use this part of the mold here which is this sort of triple part of that mold and what we're going to do is just going to put a little bit of shorten into here i'm going to take my flexi paste now remember a flexi paste or your gum paste you're going to just massage that just to just get this quickly done and then you're going to make that to the length of the bottom of the the bottom of the petal here so just roll across there and then what we're going to do um so then you're going to cut off a third so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut off about one third of the length of that so i've got about one third two thirds and then i will place that vertically so what i'm doing is i'm making sort of the basic shape of the mold so you see i've got two thirds along here and then i have a third up and then you're just going to place this into the mold remember i've got a little bit of corn a little bit of crisco into this and then i'm just going to press this in the mold so flower pro for those who aren't familiar with it, it's a totally different way of making flowers in that you're using the mold as a mold and so you don't have to buy cutters and veiners and all of that stuff so everything is done in the mold and you're going to take this out of the mold and then what i would do is turn it over because you see it's got all the veining i will then turn it over so this will actually be a way we can vein both sides of the petal you see so that goes into the into the mold there all right and the side we do second will be the end up but you see it's going to give you the nice veining onto the petals and then we're going to use the, and then we're going to just work the edge on the soft side of the pad with a ball tool. So I'm going to use a ball tool here. Just going to work a little bit on the edge of the pedal here. So this is going to be, so this is going to work around the edge. So that is going to be, so you just soften, do that on the back of the pedal. I turn it over onto, I'm going to vein, and I'm going to vein with my companion tool needle do this on com um, the cosmetic sponge all right and so then you're going to so once you've done that we're going to pop that into yeah just be really quick because we have those should come in on in 15 minutes okay, we'll still got 15. yeah you might have a short break between this one <laughs> all right so now now what we're going to do is then we're going to do the wing petals, all right? So the wing petals are going to be, um, so now make those from a number five size ball of paste, all right? So then what you're going to do is you're just going to measure those. So this is going to be number five size. So you can see it's actually a third below the hole and two thirds above the top, you see? So that would be how you'd measure like a number five size. So you see there's about a third below the hole, two thirds above. So I have two of those. And again, because I'm quickly with those so you can put a little bit and these are the wing petals all right so these are the two wing petals here all right so these are the little wing petals so you make that into a little cone shape little cone shape and this is also why i did the download to try and make that easier for you so you don't have to write everything down everything was on the download so hopefully made it easier for everybody so, yeah. so you're just going to press those into the mold you press this one into the mold so these will give you the two wing petals now this little mold here uh, when we did the retreat here in melbourne beach a few weeks ago we made the plumeria with this part of the mold but also like for example this little mini plumeria this little mini plumeria was made with five of those so you just make five of those and you make them into a fan shape and this literally makes little mini plumeria so you know so you can use this for lots of different uh, lots of different flowers depending on what size you want to make them Beautiful. and then what i'm going to do 
just like I did on the back pedal. See, I take these out. This is the plain side. And then all I'm going to do then is just going to take the... And then I will turn this, turn them over and back into the mold. So you see what I do is now I'm going to put the smooth side into the mold. And see, this is a great way to make double-sided things, you know. So you use one side of the mold. And you see, then I'm just going to press this into the mold here. And then I'm going to take this out. And again, we're just going to pop that into the little pad. The pressure's on, but that's life, you know, in <laughs> <laughs> making a wedding cake or things, there's always things. So you're going to soften um, the back. You know, we always soften the back because then you're not going to erase the vein in. Then we're going to turn it over and turn these over to the sort of heavier vein side. And again, I will then just do a little vein down the middle, little vein down the middle here. And then we're going to take the one out of the bag. I said this is called the ultimate orchid mold so it's on the supply list so what I do there is take this out and then I'm going to put some flexi glue just almost that sort of where that comes in I'm just going to put a little flexi glue here and there and then you're going to put the little pedal here it's when Sydney and I were looking for inspiration the photograph Sydney sent me we've had with obviously a fresh orchid but that's sort of something we were thought would be cute to show you so you see how that, that has then now formed the orchid. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is then I'm going to just hollow the center with my companion tool. So I'll hollow the center with a companion tool. And then I will, um, so you're going to, and then drill a hole for the spaghetti using a needle tool of the shaft of the companion tool. So, or you could use an actual piece of spaghetti, okay? Because that's what ultimately the throat is on. But I'm going to just lift this up. And then I'm just going to drill a hole through the middle and then I will use the shaft of the companion tool or your piece of spaghetti to make a hole in there. And then I'm going to put this into crepe foam to dry. And this can just dry overnight. So you just put it into your crepe foam like that, you see? All right. So just, um, just show you the basis of this. So if you were doing this with a cutter, so this cutter is on sale, so then obviously you get the 20% um, off of that. So this will be, you get this for $240 um, on, this is a dendrobium orchid cutter, all right, which is actually what the mold was based on size-wise and things. And so here, what you can do is you make your column. I said I did that freehand, half an inch long, pinch your little ears, make the hollow, the little number one piece, all right. And then what you do here, this will, this will actually cut out all of your pieces you need at one time, you see? So this actually cuts out your throat and the back parts of the cutters. This is called a multi-flap. I will just pop this into the multi-flap here. And then all I would do is if you have a fan vein or some type of veiner, which has got like a fan toward type of vein in, hibiscus vein or whatever, um, all I'm going to do is just place the pedal onto here and then press this on the veiner. All right, so that's going to give you the vein in. And then like we did on the other one, place this on. And like with your vein in tool, just going to frill around that lobe at the bottom. That makes your frill in on that part here. You put this onto cosmetic sponge using companion tools. So you're going to stroke. So your ears will cup in. Your ear will cup in here like this. And then put a little bit of glue. Now remember, these are the ones that I just made a few minutes ago. But if you have a time to put these in a food dehydrator to let them dry a little bit. And then just pinch that around. You see, and that makes your little orchid throat. And you see that holds together perfectly okay. And then just put that in your crepe foam just to dry. And in the back of this, last little part here. And I'm just going to show you just veining on the front of these, all right? But so what you would do here, you again use, these are the vertical um, sort of veins, all right? So I want those to be the sort of down the center of each one. So I would do a ver vertical vein. And we'll put it here, vertical vein. So you see how I'm just sort of 
So each time the vein is going along the pedal. So you see it's going to give you the vein in. And then when we've um, you've got the vein in done onto there. And then to show you the wing pedals. And the wing pedals, so you have, again, you see they, they go at the point of the vein of there. So that is that one. Remember, make sure, because you, you don't want two left wing pedals, okay? Mm -hmm. You want to have a right and a left one. And if you want to, then you can, of course, can uh, you can um, put those, soften the back of those if you want to, or you can leave them, because some varieties of these orchid are not so frilly just because of time. So then you turn the ears over so that all the veining is up the uppermost part of there. But this is just showing you a really quick way of making a little dendrobium orchid. But you see how you've got the, the little wing pedals there. You see that sort of makes the little wing pedals. And again, all we're gonna do is just gonna pop that. See, when you, when you cup it in the center with the little ball tool, that's the bottom of the little wings and that's going to sort of form everything together, so they fuse together. Then you just take this off, so you see the shape of the orchid, all right? But this is an FMM orchid cutter, so this is in a sale area on the website. So if you go to the sale area, you'll see it's $3, and then it will be like two forty with your 20% discount, all right? And that will be your little orchid. And then we put this in here, and then we're just going to leave those to dry. So we're actually just going to leave those till tomorrow, and then tomorrow, first thing I will do is I'm going to put a little bit of flexi glue around here, and then I will show we're just going to push that through, and the flexi glue will dry pretty quickly. But also you can use tomorrow because of time restraint, and also use a little bit of melted isomol as well, a little tiny bit of isomol into there, and you'll put that together, and that would make your little orchid. All right, and that's how we will make the little orchid. But I'll show you putting that together uh, tomorrow. All right. So anyway, of course, you don't have to do all of this. You could use a little fake orchid. You know, you might have one at home, but also the umbrella. I just wanted to show you making the paste one, but you can, of course, totally use the paper one. So those of you that ordered the kit, but also if you have wafer paper, you can use that. But uh, anyway, so I'm just, just yeah. get, let me tilt right. us back up here. That was amazing. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Every single element was just incredible, especially those orchids. I love those. All right, so well, yeah. Thank, yeah, so anyway, um, I hope everybody enjoyed today. Um, have a really great evening. If you have any questions, I will post, as I said, the, uh, about the sugar in, but I'll also put the, uh, the link to the Katie Sue videos so you can check the whole video out that shows my ultimate orchid mold. Uh, then, then you can actually watch the actual dendrobium orchid. Uh, but as I said, you know, you should be able to make that work. And remember, don't get too stressed about this because, you know, everybody will recognize it as an orchid, hopefully. It doesn't have to look botanically correct, okay? Yeah, it's inspired <laughs> yeah, by it. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Awesome. So, so, so yeah, I yeah. can't wait to see all these yeah. elements come together. Yeah. So you'll be kind of finishing up the details. Yeah, so tomorrow, tomorrow right? we'll be dusting and painting and all the finishing off. And I'll show you how to do finish off the umbrella. Um, but uh, as Perfect. I said, if you have any questions, let us know. So, all right. Yeah, so, yeah. Yep, yep. 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 so coming, coming up. up next in six minutes. So you have a little time for a quick body break. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, remember to refresh the page so yep. that you um, will get the new demo. So yep. at 315 ESC, refresh the page in about five minutes and uh, Dosha will be on. She's making some pirate cookies, which is going to be awesome. So uh, yeah, make sure you tune in. Bye, right, everybody. Awesome. Everybody's looking <laughs> like they love it. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so good. much. Okay. okay. Bye, everybody. All have right. a good evening. We'll see you soon.